All right, so <laughs> let's get back into it again, and uh, hopefully the uh, video stays this time. So we know that uh, PP is our posterior pituitary. And your posterior pituitary stands for um, the PP, right? Uh, it makes uh, an antidiuretic hormone. This antidiuretic hormone, and we talked about it again, but here we go, acts as a turnstile, just like at the fair, the county fair, and helps to keep reabsorption of water. So, uh, the turnstile itself reacts on the exit portals of your body in terms of exit, exiting a fluid. If you just break down the word antidiuretic hormone itself, we know that it stops your um, body from diuresing. It's antidiuretic. So it shuts down your kidneys, right? In terms of fluid reabsorption. So we're reabsorbing back into the body and not the potty with our antidiuretic hormone. Whoa. Now, if we have too much antidiuretic hormone, we already know that it's syndrome of ineffective antidiuretic hormone. And because I am of Spanish descent, uh, I'm going to put you guys through a little uh, Spanish, um, Spanish class here. In the Spanish language, we know that hola means hello, right? And we have the same word for no, it's no in English. Um, but for yes, in Spanish, it's si. Si, senor. Si, senorita, right? So, when you have si, ADH, I want you to think of si. Si, mas. We need more ADH, or we have more ADH. So, if you have more antidiuretic hormone, you're going to be reabsorbing more water. So, si, ADH. Yeah, it works? Okay. So it's yes. Basically, we're saying yes, ADH. We have ADH and we have a lot of it. So we're going to be reabsorbing a lot of that water. In terms of our nursing process, data, action, response, what type of signs and symptoms do you think that someone with SI, ADH, see a lot of ADH, basically, a lot of water reabsorption, how are they going to clinically present? Well, in terms of your signs and symptoms, uh, the patient is going to be in fluid volume overload, right? They're going to be having bounding pulses. Their blood pressure is going to be really increased. Just like, remember I said the pulses are going to be really bounding. They might even have JVD. All that fluid, all that volume, they might even have a headache because of all that fluid. How are the laboratory values going to look? Well, we're holding on to a lot of fluid. So, we're going to have hemodilution. All the, all the, um, all the lab values are going to look extra diluted in and of themselves. What about um, the, uh, let's see here. We already went over the blood pressure. What about the physical assessments? Uh, your patient might be complaining of um, obviously a headache, but they might actually have some edema as well in their peripherals. In terms of uh, their uh, urinary analysis, they're going to have a really low, um, I'm sorry, really high specific gravity. They're going to have like a 1.03 because the kidneys are really shut down right here. Cool? Their urine's going to look really dark, really brown, maybe even odorous because it's very concentrated. Because the kidneys are saying, uh-uh, we ain't letting no fluid out. We're doing a turnstile and we're keeping that reabsorption of fluid in. So in SIADH, we're saying, si, sí, mas ADH, senor, hay cheese nachos, right? <laughs> Something like that. Now, on the other hand, for DIADH, 
diabetes insipidus, all we're really telling your ADH to do is to die, right? Go jump off a bridge and die. Urgh, die, ADH, die, right? That's all we're telling ADH to do. So we're saying, ADH, get your turnstile out of here. We are not reabsorbing the water. We are putting all that fluid in the potty and not in the body. And we're having your patient go pee pee a lot. We're telling ADH to die. And we're pretty much opening up the kidneys to have massive amounts of urinary outputs. So for our nursing process here, we're going to have increased urinary outputs, right? All that massive amounts of fluid out. Urinary analysis, we're going to really have a, um, your specific gravity is going to be very, very low. It's going to be like 1.005, very dilute. Um, for your laboratory values, you're going to be peeing out a lot of your potassium, a lot of your sodium that really resides in the exits of your body here, and that's all going to be released. But you're also going to be hemoconcentrated eventually because you're peeing so much. You just told ADH to go die, to go take a hike, jump off a bridge and die, so we're peeing way too much. So we're going to be very hemoconcentrated, which is going to drive our H and H, our RBCs, sky high. Now, in terms of your patient's signs and symptoms and their physical assessment findings, um, your patient's going to have a weak thready pulse now because of all that fluids gone. Uh, your patient might even have um, poor skin turgor in a lot of their um, extremities because they're, now they're dehydrated. Uh, your patient is going to have um, possibly syncopal episodes and be very dizzy and very faint because of the decreased fluid. The blood pressure is going to be down. Um, so all these signs and symptoms really all go back to ADH itself. So if you have too much ADH, C ADH, right? Mass ADH. Or if you have diabetes insipidus, you're telling that hormone to die, then um, that's where we get all of our signs and symptoms and clinical presentations, okay?